for that. Um, but in any case, good morning from me, Stanley. And Karen, good morning. Uh, from my Good wife, morning. Karen. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this morning, we're going to have a bilingual service again, Afrikaans and English. Yes. Um, uh, in, in South Africa, if you're not from South Africa, uh, we've got 11 languages and two of the main languages, Afrikaans and English. Um, ministry is basically Afrikaans, is mainly Afrikaans. We've been ministering on the internet since 2014. Um, we've been ministering uh, in Afrikaans. But to accommodate all our English brothers and sisters and those that want to hear the gospel, we have decided to minister in English as well. Now, Afrikaans is our home language. That's our mother tongue. English is our second language. Yes. So uh, we still, sometimes we're still struggling to express ourselves, but we are doing our best. We can understand English. So if you want to speak to us in English, you are most welcome to speak to us in English. Uh, but in South Africa, if you speak Afrikaans in English, the majority of the people will understand <laughs> you. You will come right every everywhere where you go if you speak either Afrikaans or English or even both of them. Now, most of our Afrikaans people in South Africa do understand English. So to them, if we're doing a bilingual service, they get the service uh, twice yes. <laughs> in Afrikaans and, and in English. English. So if we do speak Afrikaans, we do interpret it in English. So please don't turn off and say, oh, no, no, this is going to be in a different language. We do interpret it so that you can still follow the message. Now, this morning, we want to talk uh, about a very interesting subject. Uh, I called it love and hate. Because <laughs> we are taught by, I mean, that is the, 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 the core of the gospel is love, to love. But then there's also scriptures that say we must hate. Yeah. <laughs> so this morning we're going to talk about it and see what is the scriptural context of each of these scriptures. And then we're going to talk about the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we're going to talk about lief en haat. Mm -hmm. Nou, baie keer sê die woord, ons moet onszelf haat, baie keer sê die woord, ons moet mekaar lief hee, ons vijand lief hee, ons naaste lief hee, soos ons self, maar die ander kan sê, ook ons moet haat. So, um, hoe moet ons het verstaan? Het kan baie keer een confusion in ons leven veroorzaak, dat ons het nie lekker verstaan nie, hoe, hoe sê die woord dit nou? Ek moet my nie een oomlik haat, maar die volgende oomlik moet ek ander lief hee, soos ek myself lief hee. <laughs> yeah. So, that's a confusion. Okay, now to start off the very first commandment and the biggest command, because Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law and the prophets yes. and the Pesachs. Yes. And we should not forget that. So the Heer het gekom, Jesus het gekom om die wet te vervul, die Pesalums, die profete en die um, wet. So op die einde van die dag, alles is vervul in die Heer Jesus Christus. Hy het een scheiding kom maak, hy het een vervulling kom breng. So ons kan het nie meer... Um, now the fulfillment of the law is love if we don't love god and love one another we are not walking in the fulfillment of the law of what jesus came and did so the fulfilling of the wet is the liefde so as ons nie die liefde wandel nie, verwandel ons nie in die vervulling van die wet nie. Ok, let's read in Mark 12. There's a lot of scriptures about the fulfillment, but this one in Mark is, uh, I think, is, is the most um, uh, informative. Yeah. <laughs> ok, Mark 12 verses 29 to 31. Mark 12 verses 29 to 31. And Jesus answered them, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt lo shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. With, um, this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no more, there is none other commandments greater than these. Okay, so... First of all, the word of God says the, to love God and your neighbor is equal. Yes. They are like each other. So you can't say you love God if you don't love your neighbor. Yes. You can't say you love your neighbor if you don't love God. And even in 1 John, uh, the, the Bible teaches us that you cannot say you love God, but you hate your brother. That's impossible 
because your love that you receive from God must reflect towards your neighbor. So what happens as you your last life is as yourself, then fulfill your debt. I can't be kept in your house. Therefore, um. <laughs> <laughs> that for as you the 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 two young boys on fourth life day. In your last is as yourself. That on yourself. That is yourself. The belangrijkheid. Yes. So as you the one now, Lord, and now you the other now. So as with all two, you have a belangrijk ach in the fulfilling of the debt. Yeah. So you can hear the word saying what. Je kan niet zeggen het God lief, maar je had je broeder niet. Yes. So, um, ons liefde tegen ons God wordt gereflecteerd hoe ons tegen ons naast ons broeder optreedt. Oké, okay, prijs die Sorry, heren. Sorry, I've got something in my <laughs> mind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oké, okay, that's not a problem. Then it says in Matthew mm -hmm. 5 verses 43. We're going to read in Matthew 5 verses 43 to uh, until 48, Matthew 5, verse 43. This is all about love. This is the nice part. Um, you have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despite, despitefully <laughs> use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, but he maketh his Son um, to rise on the evil and the, on the good, and uh, sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Um, for it, if you love them with, uh, which love you, what reward have you? Do you even... Uh, do not. Sorry. Do not even <laughs> the publicans um, do the same? And if you sh salute your brethren only, what do you more? What do you have more than the others? Do not even the publican, publicans do, yeah, do so. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Be they therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So here it is a clear statement. If we want to be the children of God, He says we must love our enemies, we must bless those that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and despitefully. Use you and persecute you. So the word says, we must be live what we have, what all the bad things that we do, we must be good to each other, we must be live, so we must not be afraid of what you can do. So, because if you don't do it, if you don't do your brother good, say the word, what is a good do? Do the unfortunate people, but the same thing. So, what is a loan that you now get if you don't do your brother good? So, this is very difficult to do the person who is coming to you, and to love 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 you. So, on the end of the day, this is so costly how the word is. And this day for people out, this day for people out. Yes, and at the end of verse 48, it says, be perfect even as your father. So, when, when we read these few verses, and even if you start reading from the beginning of Matthew 5, we, we see that uh, to be perfect is not always to be sinless. Yeah. Because we have sin, but we must confess our sin. We'll get to that point now. But um, we are. it doesn't mean we are sinless. It's a mindset. It's a conviction in our heart that makes us perfect. Ja, so as jy perfect is, sê dit nie, jy doen geen sonde nie. Um, dit is net een kwestie van, jy het een sekere um, uh, uh, saak in jou hart. En op die einde van die dag is dit, a, dit is een motief in jou hart wat jy yes, het. So as jy volgens dit lewe, dan raak jy nie meer een sondaar nie, as ek het nou so kan stel. Jy raak heilig, jy raak rein. So op die einde van die dag, dit is die probleem baie keer in ons lewe, dat um, ons denk son, net sonde is een probleem. Maar op die einde van die dag, wat is jou motief in jou hart? Ja, dit is die kwestie van, as jy nie die son oor jou vijand gin nie, as jy nie die son oor ander gin nie, dan het jy ook nie volmaak geword. Dat kan nie maar volgens die mense standaard sondeloos wees. Ja. Maar as jy te sê, jy is in Godse oor sondeloos. Nie volmaak nie. So, even if we, um, and this is what my wife has just said, um, sometimes we think we are perfect if we don't do sin. Yes. But if uh, if you look at the principle that Jesus Christ described here, 
it's all about a mindset and attitude in your heart if you don't if you don't permit the sun to shine over everybody then you're not perfect in love because god is patient with every single person doesn't matter how according to our standards and even to god's standards how sinful and bad we are yeah. in the process god is still patient on us yes. so what gebeur is <coughs> die here is baie lang moedig oor ons yes en um, wanneer ons um, daarna streef hy is my lang moedig oor ons en hy is lang moedig oor die son daar ook yes en um, so op die einde van die dag hy gee nie sommer nie die son daar oor nie yes. hy het hom ook lief yes. hy wil hom ook red hy wil hom ook verloos en al die type van dinge so ons moet ook lang moedig wees oor mekaar yes. en um, mekaar so lief hee dat ons die son die een oor die ander sien skyn yes. en um, as jy nie so is het jy nog veel volmaak geword in die liefde nie yes. as jy enige haat gevoel teen enige iemand het en dit is hoe streng die genade is dan is jy een moordenaar en yes. jy moet dit gaan uitsorteer in jou hart Amen. so op die einde van die dag dit is wat jou volmaak raak maak as jy die liefde uitleef en toepas en maak die saak oor wie nie Yes. oor die onrechtvaardige, die rechtvaardige, dit is hoe God is, en yes. sy groot almachtige liefde, leef hy dit uit op amal. Ja, yeah, so God gives mercy to every single person, and um, even to those who completely deny him, yes. and maybe uh, blaspheme against, against him willfully, etc. God even uh, pours out his mercy on everybody, and this is the problem we have as human beings is yes. because of God's mercy we abuse God's mercy yes. but now this is lovely and great and now we must love everybody but let's look at some other scriptures in the Bible and see how does it uh, is it in conflict with this one is it an uh, is it okay. opposite of this one sorry contradict yeah, yeah. does it contradict this uh, this scriptures um, if you read it like that, it might be quite confusing. Yes. Okay, so let's read Luke 14, verses 25 to 30. 30. Yes. <laughs> now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, I just want to uh, uh, set your attention. He said, great multitudes. So many people followed so Jesus. So a great it for Jesus gevolg. Yes. If everybody comes comes if to anyone. me, if every, anybody comes to me, if and anyone, <laughs> yeah. if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, we cannot be. He, um, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Um, for which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Okay, so here the Bible says, You must hate your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brothers, your sister, and even your own life. And if you don't bear your cross and come after Jesus, you cannot be his disciple. So what I he say, I say that was with Amalad, you know, your, um, your, 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 moet jy haat en jy moet jou kruis opneem en hom volg, anders is jy nie waard om sy disciple genoem te word mm. of om sy disciple te wees Now, I mean if you look at your neighbor if you look at somebody else I mean your father and your mother, your wife and your children, your brothers, your sisters is more than your neighbor than a stranger, isn't it so? So, how do we need to understand this? Now let's look at, at Matthew 10 verses 34 to 38 to try to understand this scripture here matthew 10 verses 34 to 38 do not think that i came to bring peace on earth i did not come to bring peace but a sword for i have um, some i have come to set a, a man against his father a daughter against her mother 
and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and the man's enemy will be those of his household. He who, love, who, he who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his love will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Sure. Oh. Okay, so now, now here's this, uh, a little bit more clarity. If you love any human being, it doesn't matter if it's your father, your mother, your family, your closest relatives and loved ones. If you love them more than God, you're not worthy of his kingdom. Yes. So as jy enig iemand boor die Heere lief het, enige persoon, enige familie, enige ma, pa, boetie, sissie, kind, maak nie saak wat nie, boor die Heere lief het, is jy nie waard om sy disciple te wees nie. Sure. So now he says, if you will, if you find, if you find the, your life, you will lose it. Yes. And when we look at family and um, we want to belong, and sometimes you 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 find yourself within your family because i mean your family yeah. is your closest relatives you grew up with your family yeah your blood is thicker than water with them. yeah you're more, way more comfortable and you can relate yeah. easier with your family so he says if you try to to find your life in your family um and not in god then you are not worthy of his kingdom so as jy probeer om jou leven te vind in jou familie, jou familie stamboom, as ek het so kan stel, dan um, verloor jy jou, jou leven, jou eeuwige leven, want jy kan nie um, jou leven gaan vind in een aardse familie nie. So dan verloor jy jou eeuwige leven. So dit is nog wel baie erg om aan te denk. Um, I want to explain something. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, I, I received it in English, I'm going to try to... Um, to, 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 say it to say it in English, to talk it through in English. Um, in the Old Testament, uh, we can see that every uh, person depends on a blessing from his father or grandfather. That's correct. Yeah. And um, you were from a certain tribe in the Old Testament. So if you can look at the tribe maybe of the uh, Levites, yes. okay, when you were a Le Levite, um, that was your um, privilege to serve in the temple. Good, okay, yeah. so um, that was like that, and n nobody could say anything. Okay, even if you were not um, uh, uh, righteous, yes. you could serve in the temple. Yes. Okay, so that that's the the thing that you depend on on your tribe. Yes, so on your heritage. Yes, yes. on your heritage, on your yes. earthly heritage. Yes. Okay, so, um, and when somebody, a, a father or a grandfather died, he gave you a certain blessing That's upon right. your life. Uh, yeah, that was in the Old Testament. The yes. Old Testament. Yeah. And you depend on that certain blessing. That were very important to get that blessing from your father or your grandfather. And um, so... When you were on a, uh, were of a certain tribe, um, you were um, blessed in, in God's eyes as well. Yes. But on this earth. Yeah, because the father carried the authority and what he yes. said, even if you look just at, uh, 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 at Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, we see it very clearly. And even in Joseph's lives, and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, examples. Yeah. If the father spoke a blessing, yes. it happened. If he spoke a curse, it happened exactly like that. Yeah, so he's got the authority to do that. Mm. Okay, so, but the most of the time it was an um, earthly blessing. Like yeah. your cattle is going to be blessed, or your land is going to be blessed, yes, or yes. your children is going to be so blessed. That was all physical material. Physical material yeah. stuff, yeah, yeah, that will be blessed, mm. okay, by your grandfather or wow. by your father. Oh. And um, that, but when Jesus came, um, and they, they were no other father for the for the tribes. Okay, they were not a heavenly father because they were under the curse of sin. Yes. They were under the curse of the law. Mm. Okay, so 
um they so, so so the earthly father were, were basically like a mediator were yes. basically the authority of god within the family the a family heritage yeah so you had not a yemosa father on for me only a promise okay, okay that there will be wow. a heavenly father yeah okay yes. so so when um when god gave the um promise to abram mm -hmm. um it didn't happen immediately mm -hmm. okay so they depend on the um earthly tribe mm -hmm. okay so <laughs> that's yeah. so that's so beautiful and um they live in that mm -hmm. that circumstances that blessings that curse whatever happened there they lived under that okay so then then god knows that they need a father they need a release of this curse or of this mm, earthly blessing quite, quite nice. yeah. <laughs> so then he sent jesus christ yes. and now when we um receive jesus in our hearts when we uh, get, uh, get the rebirth in our hearts that bondage break yeah we get the real father then then we get the real father then your old tribes and heritages and families and whatever doesn't matter anymore the blessing of them and that is why um the people in today's church want to give the blessing to their children they want to give the blessing to their, their um, physical children <laughs> yes they tell them you are going to be blessed on this earth you are going to be blessed in this land or whatever in the, in this earthly um uh, blessings yes and now we don't understand that this is a break this is for by in jij as kind van die here kan nie meer vir iemand een aardse blessing gaan gee. Want Jesus het gekom om vir ons een eeuwige belofte te wees. And even the, even the, the, the promise that, made, uh, that God made to Abraham was to his seed. If you go yes. and read in Galatians 3, it actually explains the entire uh, uh, promise that God made to Abraham in his seed, in the seed of Jesus Christ. But if you read in Matthew 16 verse 24, what my wife is explaining here, let us read here again. And now we will be able to start understanding why it sounds contradictory. To love yourself, love your neighbor, then hate yourself, hate your, uh, your, your neighbor. Yeah. Uh, of course, I mean your mother, father, brother, sisters is also your neighbor. It's not just my mother, not just my father, not just my sisters. It's also my neighbor. My wife is also my neighbor. And the Bible says, Jesus said, yeah, you must even hate your wife. <laughs> I think some, some, <laughs> some people will love this. Hate your wife or hate your husband. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's read in Matthew 16, verse 24 to 25. And then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will um, lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So to hate something is to deny something. Yeah. Okay, that is the point. Now, when Jesus Christ were on earth in one stage, and let's read there, and then uh, I see my wife is quite anxious to get to the point. <laughs> so so <laughs> let's, what, what she said now is actually, further in the message but she was so so excited but at least there's a foundation yeah, but now you can get the foundation yeah, okay. Of the, of the okay let's read mark 3 <laughs> verses 33 mark yeah. 3 verses 33 <laughs> but he answered them saying who is my mother or my brother and he looked around in a circle that those who sat about him and said here are my mother and my brothers uh, for whoever does not do the will of God is my brother. Uh, for whoever does the will of God mm -hmm. is my brother and my sister and my mother. So in the Old Testament, there was a physical heritage. That's why if you look at one stage where Paul wrote, he said, don't keep on worrying about your heritage. If if we even look here in uh in uh now i want to say in abraham <laughs> in matthew where john the baptist baptized yeah. um let's read in afrikaans first uh, matthew 3 verses 9 and when you think on by yourself 
Ich muss mich denken, bei Jelle sagte sie, uns ist Abraham als Vater nicht. Wenn ich sie für Jelle das gut mache, um mit ihr die Klipperkinder von Abraham aufzubauen. So, it says here in Matthew 3, verse 9, and think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Yes. So, here even John the Baptist says, it's not about the physical heritage, the physical, <laughs> the physical, uh, uh, um, tribe, 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 tribe. Yes. thanks a lot, <laughs> thanks a lot, but about the physical tribe anymore. Yeah. There's something different that is, and that is what uh, John the Baptist came to, he, he already started to minister something, so that the people's minds can start to change. Yes. Those that he ministered, that their minds can start to change and gradually go into the direction. So when Jesus Christ will come, that they will also accept what Jesus Christ ministered to them. And yeah, he already laid a foundation. It's not about our earthly heritage, not our Jewish heritage, not our um, whatever heritage you have on this uh, on the earth. Okay. If you are Afrikaans or German or American or uh, European or whatever, it's not about the physical anymore. As I had come say that that mark had in the sock from water, afstammeling you is or water. No, si of tal of wat ook al jy is nie, dit kan nie meer vir jou enige redding bring nie, dit kan nie meer vir enige siening bring in jou lewe nie. So hy het kom, hy kom preek, dat ons harte kan oopgaan om uh, vergifnis te kan ontvang, om die eeuwige lewe deelachtig te kom raak, om ons harte te kom te begin oopmaak vir die vergifnis wat op pad is. Yes. So dat hulle nie meer net steen op een aardse blessing nie, want onthou, hulle, dit was vir hulle, verschrikkelijk belangrijk. Yes. En dit is hoe dit gebeur het, en klaar. Ja, yeah, and, and, and we th if we think about the mindset, even in the Christian church, that they say we must bless the earthly Jews, because they are the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the, the, the tribe, they are the seed of Abraham, and uh, Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham, yes. and John the Baptist said, don't think of you to be from the tribe of, of Abraham, from yes. the heritage of Abraham. Um, because it's not about the earthly anymore. And we want us as kids, I'm going to talk about Afrikaans. We want to see the Jewish folk, we want to see them. We want to see them, they are still the outcome folk. So as we see them, we will be seen. And because we want to connect with the earthly Abraham, yes. it's because we want earthly blessings. Yes, this is the thing, and this is the thing of the gospel we do not understand. Otherwise, if we look at the physical, all the scriptures that we've read so far will be in contradiction with each other. Yes. Because even Abraham, even if he was righteous in the eyes of God, he wasn't Jesus Christ. He wasn't the Redeemer. He was a human being like us. So he was a sinful person. Every single person in this world are sinful. Doesn't matter. Even Moses, Elijah, everybody was sinful. Yeah, they were just anointed by the Spirit to do yes. some work um, on that stage. Yes. Um, was net gesalf om vir oomlik um, iets te doen vir Heere, om een profetiese woord te gee, of om een volk te leid. Maar hulle was nog steeds sondige mense. Yes, hulle het nog nie tot redding of verlossing gekom nie, so dit het absoluut oor die aarde gegaan. Nou, as jy alles in die oud testament lees, dit gaan oor die aardse erfenis. Yes. A earthly heritage. That's why we that's why the conviction is in the Christian church and the doctrine to bless the earthly Israel so you will be blessed because God gave the blessing to Abraham. But nobody reads the entire New Testament. Even yes. if you just go and read Galatians 3, you will understand that even Abraham, if you go and read in Hebrews 11, even Abraham understood it wasn't about the earthly, but God had to do something in the earthly for Jesus Christ to come to the fore. Yes. But when Jesus Christ was born and he was crucified, then the Old Testament law of instances and the physical bonds were broken. 
Ja, so toe Jesus gekom het, is die fysische bande met die oud testament die sy wet verbreek. Yes. So dit gaan nou nie meer oor aardse blessings. Yes. En dit is ook om ons as kinders van die Heere altyd wil terug gaan soen toe. Want ons is altyd bezig met die oud testament die sy wette. Ons wil altyd terug keer soen toe. So wanneer jy daar idee het in jou geestelike lewe, gaan jy voel dat my nog steeds oor die aarde gaan. Dat my nog steeds oor die belofte gaan. Um, wat, wat, die, wat, wat God van Abraham gegeven, dan verstaan je dat het in vervulling gekomen is. Yes. So as jy onder dit bly lewe, as jy dit wil bly toepas, dan sê jy met jou eie woorde, dat Jesus het nog nie gekom nie, yes. hy het nog nie kon vervul nie, Amen. so jy sê eindelijk dat daar toch niks gebeur nie, yes. so jy verloon, jy laster, eindelijk teen God en teen, teen Jesus, so op die einde van die dag, as ons dit kan verstaan, dat die Heere Jesus het gekom om my bande te breek, en te yes. verbreek, met Amen. enige familiebank, Amen. met enige heritage, met enige traai. And now why, why did God said we must hate mother, brother, father? We are born in a physical world. Okay? Mm. The Bible says we are born in sin. You're not born with sin, there's a difference. Yes. You are born in, in sin. You've got this earthly sinful body. Yes. This is the manifestation, the, the outward appearance, the proof of sin. This is this body of blood, of flesh and blood. Now, we are born uh, in an earthly family yes. with blood ties, physical, uh, although it's physical, it's spiritual blood ties, <laughs> but we're from the same blood. Yeah. Okay. So they say blood is thicker than water. We can relate easier to family. Yeah. Okay. So what gebeur is, ons word in die sondige lichaam geboren. Ons word nie met sonde geboren, nie, ons word in sonde geboren. So jy word in hierdie wereld geboren. Yes. Okay. Met sekere familiebande wat jou bind aan mekaar. Yes. Nou, dit, dit klink asof mens wil sê, dit is een vleeslike band, maar toch is dit een geestelike band, so ons moet dit net recht verstaan. Yes. So, op die einde van die dag, dit is iets wat jou verbind tot een familie. So, actually, the blood connects you, and that is your family blood, your family life. Yes. So, my surname is Franks. I am from the Franks tribe. Yes. <laughs> and in the physical, in the flesh, in the sinful part of life, we are connected as a family. Ja, so as jy connect is met een aardse familie, ek is Ludiek, my maiden name is Ludiek, so nou is ek deel van die Ludiek draad. Ek is deel van die Ludiek stam. So ek gaan sekere gewoontes en dinge van die Ludiek sê. Ok, so want ek is verbind met bloed aan hierdie Ludiek familie. Ja, yeah, most, most of the time we are only connected in our sinful ways. Yes. Nie die goeie dele, nie die slechte dele kom altyd uit. Yes, we are inherently, we are inherently wicked. The yes. Bible says, God says to Moses, that that is the problem in the heart of man. We are inherently wicked. So we connected in the flesh, in our family. Ja. Ok. Ja, so bloed is dikker as water, so ons connect hier met mekaar. Yes. In die vlees, in die sondage toestand. That's why, we want as family we want close bond because we are actually bound in the flesh yes. with the sin okay now jesus christ came to this world okay and he shed his blood yes. if you go and read in the bible there's quite a few verses one is in revelation 5 verses 9 where it says jesus christ redeemed us with his blood mm. he redeemed us with literally let's read that Scripture, you can look Afrikaans, how would you say so well? Ja, so, so wat gebeur is, dat um, toe Jesus gekom het, het hy hierdie bande kom breek. Want um, ons, ons word dier sy bloed vrygemaak. Ons is dier sy bloed vrygekoop. Van hierdie sonde, waarin ons gebore is. Yes, amen. And if we look at Revelation 5 verse 9 and 10, he says, and they sang a new song, saying, thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us uh, unto our uh, kings and priests, and we shall reign on, uh, on the earth. Yeah. So the blood of Jesus came and cut the our earthly, earthly bonds. bonds and yeah. connections, of the flesh, and, blood yeah, and through his blood, he made us priest and king unto his God. Yeah, so what <laughs> have you done? Jesus has come and he has come free, he has come free, from the earthly blood line, from the earthly blood bonds, 
zodat so ons verbind kan wees aan God en dat ons sy konings en priesters kan wees. Yes. Nou, Heer die bloed van Jesus ja, Christus. Ja, die bloed van Jesus. Ja, so nou gaan dit in jou, is jy part of the tribe of the Levites nie? Nee, nou gaan dit oor, is jy nou deel van die bloed van Jesus yes. om een priester en een koning te wees? So when you are born again, you are connected. You are cut off from your earthly mother, father, brothers, sisters that doesn't serve the Lord. If somebody serves the Lord, even in that respect, in your fleshly nature, you are cut off by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Now blood, in, blood represents life. Either it is sinful life or it's godly life. So, right. so, so blood is life. Of het nou um, godelijke leven is, wat jy van die Heer Jesus Christus af ontvang, van sy bloed af. En dit kan ook een sinful leven wees, dit kan ook een sondige leven wees, yes. wat dier hierdie bloed vloe. Yes, okay. so the moment you are born again, the blood of Jesus Christ and redeems you from your fleshly heritage. Because yes. your fleshly heritage is sinful. Yeah. And if your family, your closest relatives, does not serve the Lord. The blood of Jesus cuts you off. Because God is a jealous God. Ja, so as jou familie, <coughs> enige familie, jou naaste, naaste, naaste familie, nie die Heere die nie, en jy gee jou hart vir die Heere, jy kom tot wedergeboorte, dan kom die bloed van Jesus, en hy kom breek die bande, hy kom snu jou af van die aardse, sondige familie. Yes. <laughs> en hy verbind jou aan ek, Ander familie, vrouw die heren. Ja, kos, you must get a new family tree. Yes. Get a new stamboom kree, a new family tree. And now you are, your new family tree starts with Jesus Christ. That's why you must be born again. again. You must receive a new life. You start a new life. And that new life it comes through Jesus, through his blood. So now you have a new bloodline. Ja, so wat nou gebeur is, as toe Jesus gekom het, en hy die bande kon breek, moes jy een nieuwe familie kry. En as jy weer gebore is, sê dit vir jou, jy is nie meer gebore in hierdie wereld, en jy is weer gebore in die himmel, <laughs> jy het een ander geboorte ondergaan. So wat gebeur het, al die bande van die, van die verlede, van hierdie aarde, wat jou gebind het, aan een sekere familie, aan een sekere bloedlijn, het gebreek. And now this is the problem where Jesus Christ says, if you still after your spiritual rebirth wants to connect to those that don't serve the lord emotionally yeah. wants still to connect and be proud of your family tree and say now the lord says i must honor my father and my mother then we have a problem then jesus christ said he came to make the vision between even if it's your closest, closest family. So that is why he, he said, we must hate. You must not, you must hate the sin, but we want to still look good in the family. We, there's maybe some inheritance waiting for us. Yeah. We still want our family to praise us. Yes. And now, if we have that mindset, we keep on connecting to the physical, to the fleshly, and we keep on connecting to the sinful. Ja, so wanneer jy die Heere dien, <coughs> en jy bly verbind aan jou familie, as gevolg van die erfenisdalk, of as gevolg van jy wil nog steeds goed lyk in hulle oe, of emotioneel verbind wees, of trots is op jou herkomst, yes. <laughs> dan is jy die koninkryk van God die waard, want dan verbind jy jyself weer met hierdie sonde, hierdie ongerechtigheid. Nou, toe Jesus gekom het, het hy a, einde kom maak, hy het hy die wet kom vervul, die wet van sonde, die wet wat die kennis van sonde bring. Yes, so nou is ons nie meer um, afhankelijk van daar die blessing, yes. van daar die aardse blessing, van daar die familiebande blessing nie. Yes. Ons is nou afhankelijk van een ander saak. Yes. So toe Jesus kom en hy kom breek die bande, toe kom verbind hy ons aan die hemelse sieninge. Nou wat is die hemelse sieninge? Dit is so dat jou siel gereed kan word, so dat jy verlos kan word van die bose. Yes, amen. En in die oud testament was dit die deel van hulle lewe nie. Yes. Hulle kon nie verlos word nie, hulle kon nie vry kom nie, hulle kon nie loskom van die um, basis bande wat hulle gebind het aan die wet nie. Yes. En toe Jesus kom, toe kom breek in hy sondige bande. 
Yeah, because if we win the blood of Jesus Christ and cuts off us all uh, from uh, the physical bloodline so that the sin can't uh, penetrate us, we sometimes willfully go back to look good in the eyes of the family yes. because we, we, we quickly get the, the um, accusation that we are loveless. Yes. But when we look at the blessing, the blessing that we now with the blood of Jesus, we are connected with heaven. Yes. And the, the blessings from heaven flows through us now. Even my wife and I, we both serve the Lord. We are not connected, physical, spiritual, yeah. connected. She's connected with Christ through the Spirit. Yeah. I'm connected with Christ. And in Christ, we are one. Yeah, we as, are not one here. Yeah, this is a mooi kijk that <clears throat> wanneer jy die Heere begin dien, dan verbind hy jou aan die lichaam. En hy is die hoof van die lichaam van Christus. So wat gebeur is, jy word deel van een geestelike familie. Jy word deel van geestelike lede van een lichaam. Yes. <laughs> maar op die einde van die dag, dan het jy gemeenskap met die heilig is. Yes, oh, maar jy is verbind aan die Heere Jesus Christus. Yes. Aan sy bloed. Ja, ons is nie dier mekaar verbind. Ja. Ons is in Christus verbind en so is ons met mekaar verbind. verbind yes. but, what is the blessing? Let's look at the blessings. Act, Acts 3 verses 25. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall, a seed shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. So here he's talking about you are the Jews. Uh, uh, Peter was preaching here to the Jews. You are the Jews and you had this blessing. But what does this blessing entail? Let's look at 20, uh, verses 26. Unto you first God have raised up his son Jesus, send him to bless you. Then, wow, yes, blessings. The blessing then, of Abraham. <laughs> what is this blessing? Now the, the, the following of this verse describes the blessing. In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. From his bless you that. Yes, so the purpose and the blessing we receive from heaven is the blessing of repentance, the blessing to turn away from sin through Jesus Christ. But without Jesus Christ, we won't be able to turn our back on sin. Yes. But when His blood comes and cuts us off, we are connected to Him. <clears throat> and we don't always understand the power of forgiveness. It sounds, it sounds, some, uh, it's, it sounds frail. It doesn't sound powerful. Yeah. But if your sin isn't forgiven, Yes. You cannot be connected to God. You cannot inherit the uh, eternal life. Ja, so op die einde van die dag klink het vir ons, maar, ach, dit is hier erg nodig nie, maar op die einde van die dag, as jy nie verloos word van jou sonde nie, ons verstaan nie altyd die kracht van vergifnis nie, want dit is die enigste manier hoe jy aan God verbind kan word. Hoe hy met jou gemeenskap in hande, want onthou nie, God hou nie gemeenskap met die godeloosheid nie. So, wanneer jy bly verbind wees aan hierdie godeloose um, uh, erfenis of aan hierdie godeloose sinful um, nature of jou, dan kan hy nie met jou gemeenskap hou. Yes, I mean. Hy kan nie met jou um, fellowship heen. Yeah, so God doesn't have fellowship with the sinner. Yes. He has mercy over it. That's a big difference. And, so, so even if your family are sinful, God doesn't have fellowship with our sinful family. But now the word says that we must love our neighbor as ourselves. Yes, this and is powerful. And how must we understand that? That's the big problem. Because us think that us op a secret manier die persoon wat in sonde is moet lief he. Yeah, it's as if we want to have fellowship even if they are in, in a sinful life. To love your neighbor. What does it entail? What does it mean to love your neighbor? And remember, we've already established it. Your neighbor is your wife, your family, everybody closest to you, yeah. especially your relatives. So what does it mean that you must love your neighbor as yourself? So you want to go to heaven, correct? I think every, even the sinner that doesn't even have a Bible wants to go to heaven. So... Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you want your neighbor to go to heaven as well? Yeah, because what? you want to go to heaven. Yeah, and what did you do as a Christian, a born-again Christian, to start this walk, to, to, to uh, 
<laughs> wat gebeur is, wanneer jy um, jou neiber lief het soos jouself, jou naaste lief het soos jouself, want hou nie, jy het jouself so lief, dat jy die eeuwige lewe wil bearwe. Jy wil jimmel toe gaan, so lief het jy jouself. Okay? So jy gin jouself die eeuwige lewe. En jy moet ook vir jou naaste die eeuwige lewe gin. Dit is die liefde wat jy moet uitleef, dat jy dit aan ander ook toe kan uitleef, weet jy wat, ek wil die um, evangelie verspreid, ek wil met my naaste praat, wanneer hy een vraag het oor die evangelie, wil ek het vir hom antwoord, ek wil vir hom sê, weet jy wat, jy kan ook die eeuwige lewe beërwin, want jy, wat die ding is, as, as hy al verwerp by jou, maak nie saak nie, jy moet die liefde, wat jy vir jouself het om jimmel te wil gaan, om gered te word, moet jy vir jou naaste ook hee. Yeah, and sometimes we know if you, because we know our family, everybody knows his family, and sometimes you know if you're going to tell the truth of the gospel to one of your family members, even your mother, your father, your wife, your sisters, they will start distancing of them from you. They will start becoming your enemy. They want don't want to have fellowship with him because yeah, he's always talking about the Bible and he's always telling me I'm wrong and he thinks he's so holy and you know if you're really going to stand up for the gospel's sake, you, your own family will become your enemies that refuses to repent them. So if you want to go to heaven and how, how did you receive the Lord? Somebody told you. Yeah. And that at this stage it grew in your heart and you become born again. And before even be, you became to, uh, you become uh, 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 born again, how many people did you reject that preached the gospel to you? Yes. I did. I rejected almost every single person that uh, preached the gospel to me. But in that, uh, in that uh, the people uh, 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 ministered the gospel to me, I started thinking, even if I hate them for that moment, and eventually afterwards when I gave my life to the Lord, there was a few people I could have gone back to them and told them, hey, remember you told me the gospel. I gave my life to the Lord and I was born again. Then we had fellowship again and we were happy. But uh, if you want, if you, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you want your neighbor to go to heaven. So what do you want to, so what must you do? You must also preach the gospel. That is love. Then you, because the gospel is love, Jesus is love, then you reach out with love to him. And now, see us ook, that the word says, as we ons vijande lief het. Yes. How can we understand that? Yeah, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Now, um, ons see that the Heere, that the that God die wereld, say, en onthou nie, die, a persoon wat nie die Heere die nie, is ook a vijand van God. Yes, I mean. Okay, so it's his enemies. I'll, even, I'll ask it your family. Yeah. So, now say God, okay, now moet jy jou enemies lief het, want ek het my enemies lief. Now, who het God sy enemies lief? Hy het gekom, en hy het vir Jesus, ach, hy het vir Jesus gestuur, so dat Jesus vir ons die eeuwige lewe kon gee. Yes. So, dit is hoe lief God die wereld gehad het, sy vijande gehad het, wat om nie gedien het nie. Mm. Wees hy so lief gehad dat hy vir Jesus gestuur het, so dat hy gered kon word. Ja, so en, dit, is God, dit is Godse liefde wat hy het vir die wereld, so dat elke een gered kan word. Ja, yeah, cause Jesus died when, while we were sinners, and this is the love of God, this is how God loves his enemy. He loved his enemy and he, uh, so much that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. While we were sinners, he he invested in us, in the sinners, and he never knew if he's going to get any rewards back. Yes. He, he invested with the hope and the faith that if Jesus Christ died on the cross, his blood, people will accept it so that his blood can redeem us. So this is the way God loves his enemy is to reach out to them for repentance, not to have communion with the sin, but in the flesh, we still want to connect with friends and family. And if you, your friends and family that, that most of the time that doesn't serve the Lord, that still connects us and loves us, if you can put it in brackets, uh, is family that we are in a physical plane. We are connected still there, not spiritually. And the moment when you're going to start to minister to them and live out the gospel as you should, you know that family will become your enemy. You don't have to become their enemy. 
they will automatically become your enemy. En as nou sê die woord nog steeds vir jou, jy moet jou vijand lief hee. Ja. En dis een uitdaging. So wat moet dan gebeur, terwyl die familie jou reject, terwyl hulle jou vijand word, moet jy hulle nog steeds lief hee. So hoe is sê lief vir hulle? Jy bid vir hulle. Jy verkondig die, jy blij die evangelie verkondig. Dit maak nie saak of hulle jou uitskuif of wat gebeur nie, want jy moet nou verstaan, Jy het een nieuwe familie, jy het een nieuwe bloedlijn, jy het een nieuwe bloed in jou leven, jy het een nieuwe leven gekry, so jy is nie meer deel van jou ou leven nie, jy is nie meer deel van jou ou natuur nie, want jy is in hierdie sondige lichaam gebore, nou sê die woord ook, jy moet jou self haalt, en dit is die ergste, want jy moet hierdie sonde in jou self, moet jy haat. Ja, die Bijbel sê, jy moet haat jyself, deny jyself, so that means, jy moet haat die sin, your sinful life, in you, but jy moet love yourself, so much, to haat jyself. Ja, want jy moet jyself so lief, dat jy jyself haat, so dat jy die, die ou leven van jou, die ou bloedlijn van jou, moet jy so haat, en jy moet, die eeuwige lewe lief kry, jy moet jou verlossing lief kry, jy moet jou sening in die Heere, moet jy lief kry, jy moet het koester, en so moet jy ook ander koester, so moet jy ook ander lief hee. Yes, you must love your spiritual life so much, and that is what Jesus Christ says, that we must take up our cross, to take up a cross is not an easy thing, it's a hard thing to do, to deny yourself every day, you must love your spiritual life so much, that you are willing to leave, to cut off from earthly, fleshly things in your life first, doesn't help you just cut off and you are a preacher to others, but you still live in this willful sinful life, you must start with yourself, and as you are growing spiritually, and the blood of Jesus Christ leads you away, and cleanses you from your earthly life and sin, so the power and the love of God will grow through you, and, 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 and so you can minister in a much more powerful way, but the more you minister, and the more you are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, unfortunately, Jesus even said it, if they hate me, if they, hate me they will definitely hate you, so we must just carry on ministering the gospel and say i love people must go to heaven i will tell him the truth if my family phones me up i will tell him the truth i won't just gossip with them and 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 slander with them and blaspheme with them i will correct them and i will help them and say no no it's not like this let us pray let us serve the lord give your life to the lord i mean in this t- terrible times that we are living in and i come with fearful things yes we pray i believe the lord i believe he can help us let us pray and worship him and then you'll see e- either your family is your friend or your foe now can us work for start <clears throat> that your family was geweldig afhankelijk van your blessing okay any old testament Maar toe Jesus kom, toe kry jy een ander blessing, toe kry jy een ander sien, ok, om gereed te word. Nou, wat ons nou wil doen op hierdie aarde, en dis baie keer die probleem, ons is in een familie, en jy het al kinders en broers en sisters, of wat ook al wat vir jy lief is, en jy voel, weet jy wat, my kind moet geseend wees op hierdie aarde. And now you start to give them some blessings on this earth. You tell them, you will get the, the best husband. You will get the uh, the best job. You will best get the best career. Uh, whatever. So what is jy bezig om te doen? Jy wil hulle seen, terwyl die persoon dalk nie die Heere die nie. Yeah, we want to use the blessings of God to bless our family that doesn't serve the Lord. Ja, so terwyl jou familie nie die Heere die nie, kan jy nie gaan en sê, ek bless jou my kind met die beste man. Ek bless jou my kind met die beste man. Sukses, en met die beste job, en met die beste career, en met die beste alles nie. Want weet jy wat, op die oude van die dag is jy bezig om die woord te verkraf. Jy is bezig om dinge buiten die woord te doen. Jy wil terug gaan na die oude testament toe, waar die sening dier die mense mond gekom het, waar die sening dier die mense autoriteit gekom het. Ons het nie meer die autoriteit nie. Toe Jesus gekom het, toe het hy die autoriteit in sy hande geneem, wat die wet vir die mens gegeen het op een stadion. 
en nou sê en hy ons met die eeuwige lewe. Nou het ons een jimmelse vader wat ons sê. Ja, yeah, and that blessing is to repent. Ja, yeah. en om een eeuwigheid te kry. Yes. Ja, so, so, dit, so it's dit, about all eternal life. It's not about you, we are allowed to pray for each other and say, Lord, this is my child, my husband, my wife, please provide it for them, etc. We are allowed to ask and pray, but we cannot speak the blessing and use the word of the God, uh, the word of God to enforce it. And, uh, and it, that's actually what we do. If we speak the word of God, on, in our lives and over the uh, uh, other people's lives that doesn't serve the Lord or is just about material blessings, we are uh, uh, abusing the word of God. Yeah. And we want to force the word of God. As, to, as if we've got the authority, authority yes. to do it. Yes. That was Old Testament. Yeah, the authority <laughs> of God's blessings now is to deliver us from Princeton so that we can go into it. Sure. Ja. Dit maak vry. Yes, amen. Ek denk dit breek bande vir ons. Yes, amen. Want ek kan besef, weet jy wat, jy het glad nie meer die autoriteit om mense te gaan bless. Met een uiterlijke blessing. Jy het die autoriteit om mense na die Heere toe te doen. Yes. Jy het autoriteit om die evangelie te bedien. That's why we are priests and kings. Ja, dit is die autoriteit. Not to rule over and command sin and desires of the flesh to um, manifest in our life. If you look at the Old Testament, the, 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 the blessing where you will ro- rule over this um, uh, nice. brother of yours or whatever. Mm. So that's the, the same um, thing that we've got in our mind now. Mm. Was it all steeds die denke that ons moet rule? <laughs> now we want to rule over human yes, beings, yes. but we must preach the gospel and in the preaching of the gospel and denying yourself, you rule over the work of the enemy. Yeah, you but rule not, over sin. Yeah, and not even, then you start to understand that Christ in you rules over it. And if you're not in Christ, then you are not ruling over sin and the works of the flesh. Amen. Yes, I hope you can understand this message this morning. I hope you can understand, but this makes me free. As you can understand, you know what you have to do. If you have not your fault, you will have to get rid of your fault. You will have kan ek vir sê, is jy al vry. Yes, Want jy moet net verstaan, weet jy wat, ek het nou een nieuwe familie, ek het een nieuwe lewe, ek het een nieuwe erfenis, my erfenis is nou in die jimmele, dit gaan nie meer oor een aardse erfenis. Ja, yeah, because we must remember, God sees individuals. Yes. Um, God doesn't see my family and have blood, sympathy and connections like I do have. Yes. If my family serves the Lord, they are one with the Lord. If they don't serve the Lord, they are an enemy of the Lord. Yeah. And we need to understand that in that respect. Now the Bible says, uh, honor your father and mother. Jesus said, who is my father? Who is my mother? Those that do the will of God. So you must honor your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, to listen to them, to help them, to reach out to them, etc. So that is your father and mother. Who is your spiritual father and mother? Those that lead you and guide you in your spiritual walk. And now the Bible says, there, that you must honor. So if they preach the gospel to you, if they teach the, 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 the truth to you, you must follow after that and honor them and respect them And in, in, in that respect. So that is what it means. So if your mother and father doesn't serve the Lord, it's not, uh, it's not about providing them from physically. It, you need to honor your spiritual father and mother. Ja, as ons daarna kyk, dan sien ons die woord, sien ons moeder en ons vader eer, en Jesus het vir ons so mooi kom wees, en ek denk nie volgende aan, het is so awesome, dat Jesus het vir ons kom wees, hoe jy in jou um, bekeerde lewe, in jou born again lewe moet lewe, want hy het gekom vir die nieuwe testament, hy het gekom vir die vervulling van die wet, so op die van die dag het hy vir ons kom wees, weet jy wat, as jy um, gereed is, dan gaan jy nie meer achter familiebande aan nie. En dit is hoekom. Hy gesê het, wie is my, wie is my broers en wie is my ma? Yes. So hy het om glad die verbind aan enige familiebande nie. Want hy het vir ons kom wees, hy het vir ons die voorbeeld kom staan. Yes. So om vir ons te kom wees, weet jy wat, as jy gaan verbind daar, gaan jy een probleem ontwikkel. Dit kan hom nog teruggetraak het, dit kan hom weggetraak het. Yes. Dalk van dit wat hy moes doen. En hy moes focus, hy moes kop hou. So op die einde van die dag het hy vir ons iets gekom wees en hy het gesê, weet jy wat, 
elkeen wat die wil van God doen, is yes. my ma, is my yes. broer, is my sister, is my familie. En dis wie ons met eer. En even toe hy op die kruis was, toe, toe, um, toe sy ma en Johannes daar staan, toe sê hy vir sy ma, daar is jou sien, en vir, sy, vir Johannes, wat is het, daar is jou moeder. So wat het hy vir Johannes daar gesê? Kijk na, sien om na, as a spiritual mother. Ok, so dit gaan nie nie oor een band hier so in die fysische lewe nie, en hy het vir ons dit so mooi kom wees. Ja, yeah, but Jesus set the example, he didn't have uh, any earthly family ties. Mm-hmm. He knew it's all about the spiritual. They, he, he came to, to gather a spiritual family, not an earthly family. When he, he sent out and he sent out the apostles to preach the gospel and he blessed them to preach the gospel not his earthly mother he never ever honored his earthly mother as his earthly mother he even knew that his earthly mother need to follow in his footsteps after he has risen from the dead even his earthly mother had to repent and be baptized and receive the holy spirit for her to be able to go into heaven. And then even his earthly mother were his sister in Christ. En sy die saafde oordeel ondergaan is wat ons gaan ondergaan. So sy moes haar hart ook vir die Heere geen. Sy moes ook gedoop op. Sy moes ook haar sonde belei. Sy moes ook die Heilige Geest ontvang. Alles moes ook met haar gebeur het. So dat dit nie automatisch het met haar gebeur nie. En Jesus het haar nooit geëer as sy aardse moeder nie maar die evangelie was verkondig, sy was wel in die skare waar hy die evangelie verkondig het, yes. en wat vir my so mooi was, hy het altyd met sy disciples gepraat, hy het altyd vir hy die evangelie bedien, yes. hy het een verhouding met sy disciples gehad, want weet jy yes. wat, hy het geweet, dat hulle die evangelie verder moet gaan verspreid, yes. en Amen. dit was sy doel gewees, dit is ook omdat hy met hulle gemeenskap gehad, yes. hoekom hy met hulle een band gehad het, so dat hy hulle kon leer om die evangelie verder uit te draag. I mean, praise the Lord, that's so powerful. Yes. That's why Jesus isn't partial. He, he doesn't think of my family more than your family. Yes. Whoever serves the Lord is part of his kingdom. Whoever doesn't serve the Lord is not part of his kingdom. Whether it's family or friends and whoever we might know, this is, this is the righteousness of God. And he says, any individual, any individual that comes to me, I will give him the blessing of deliverance. Praise the Lord. I mean, now we are connected with the heavenly family. If we are connected with Christ, we are connected with each other. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll finish with prayer. Okay. Okay. Heavenly Father, I want to worship and praise you this morning. I thank you that you... Uh, 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 came and guide us and gave uh, gave us insight into this message, Father. It's always uh, uh, um, a privilege to minister the gospel. Like your word says, love your neighbor as yourself. Father, I want to go to heaven. I want my neighbor to go to heaven, Father. And that is why we are preaching the gospel, because it's your love that manif- manifests in us. Father, out of myself, I don't have any love. But the word of God teaches us so nicely and so beautifully, Father, that if we accept Jesus, you pour your love through your spirit in our hearts. We cannot love out of ourselves. We cannot (laughs) do good out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It is from your spirit that is in us. And even these words that we spoke this morning, every word of truth, Father, is words of love. It's words of encouragement. It's words that can set us free and deliver us and redeem us from the sinful world, redeem us and cut us off from all this, uh, Father, this sinful nature, this fleshly nature that's actually a nature from the devil, Father. And you came and to cut us off from this iniquity of this world. And I thank you that you've sent your son, Jesus Christ, to come and die on the cross. And he was a preparation for our sin, and the sin of this world. He is the Redeemer, Father, and we can acknowledge Him. If we can accept Him as your Son, and uh, Father, acknowledge Him as the Mediator. He never said His mother will be the Mediator. He never said His mother is more important than Him. He never had an earthly bond with her. He knew she also had to accept Him in the spiritual rebirth. 
Father, I thank you that you came and ministered to us this morning by your Spirit and through your Spirit in this message. I ask that you will bless each of your children and Father, be with them even in the earthly, financial, temporally Amen. sickness. Father, I pray that you provide and heal in this respect as well. I thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye.